Hello, it's another edition of Plus Reports, a compilation of the stories and events that made the news recently. Welcome, I'm Jacinta Obiuko. The reported arrest of the Sunday Adeyemo, who is also known as Sunday Boho in Benin Republic, a few weeks after the federal government arrested IPOP leader Nam De Kanu in Kenya, is receiving reactions from Nigerians. Iboho had been declared wanted after his Ibadan home was raided on July 1st by operatives of the Department of State Services, DSS. Osarogi Ogbonwa takes a look at the legal and diplomatic angles to this. Yoruba secessionist leader Sunday Adeyemo, also known as Sunday Bo, has been reportedly arrested while in transit in Bene Republic. As we await official statements and details of his arrest from the Nigerian government, Adeyemo's lawyer and other Yoruba leaders are reported to be making frantic moves to prevent his extradition to Nigeria. We take a look at the possibilities. You can be rest assured that uh, the Nigerian government would not define Sunday Igbo, you know, as a political fugitive. The truth is that they have criminalized every of his agitation. They have, you know, given an impression that he's been wanted for criminal purposes. And uh, you must understand that no authority, especially that of Nigeria, would assert that it is politically victimizing people just like we clearly understand it is doing. If Nigeria is able to prove to the Republic of Benin that he has committed a crime in Nigeria that's transferable in the Nigerian court, the chances are that the, the, the treaty will subsist and Nigeria will succeed in extraditing him to Nigeria to face trial in Nigeria. From treaties to diplomatic relations between both countries, analysts have spoken on the likely turn of events and what this means for others who may be seen as fugitives by the Nigerian government. So I know that this is also going to raise some concern from the diplomatic circle and, of course, individuals across the globe who may you know, see that country as a place where they may not be able to pass through again, even when they are on under genuine, you know, victimization by authorities of their country. You must be aware that uh, the relationship between Nigeria and the Republic has not been in the best of shape recently. In the recent time, there, there was a case of um, an Ogun citizen who was said to have been arrested in the Republic of Benin. And Nigeria has been asking the, the, the Republic of Benin to send back the Nigerian citizen. But... Given the fact that Benin is a beneficiary of the Nigerian Big Brother foreign policy, I do think that at the end of the day, that he will end up being extradited to Nigeria. While we wait for clarity and official statements from the Nigerian government, statements continue to pour in from leaders of social cultural groups calling for respect for the rule of law. Osaogie Ogbonwa, PLOS TV Africa. Well, some of the agitators who are demanding his release stress that they want the federal government to pay more attention to insecurity in Nigeria because without peace and security, no nation can develop. Also in this report, the arrest of Namde Kano and Sonde Iboho has put Nigeria in the diplomatic spotlight. The United Kingdom is asking questions and the Republic of Benin is not cooperating on an extradition request for Iboho. Plus TV Africa's correspondent Aneta Felix takes a look at Nigeria's place in the international community. The Republic of Benin seems to have taken a stance that questions the giant status of Nigeria in the African and international community. The country refuses to extradite Yoruba activist Sunday Adeyemo, also known as Igboho, after he was arrested at the Kotonou airport before he could jet off to Germany with his wife. On PLOS TV Africa's breakfast show, public affairs analyst Nick Agule commends Benin Republic for standing its ground. Benin Republic are very, very correct 
to insist on the rule of law, and Nigerians, we should have no reaction to it other than to follow the rule of law. Mark Adebayo, on his part, quotes the extradition treaty of 1984 between Togo, Ghana, Nigeria and the Republic of Benin to make a point about Igbo and Enamdikano's right to demand for self-determination. That treaty, extradition treaty says that you cannot extradite somebody who is fighting for his rights, who is fighting for self-determination. So I do not see how Nigeria is going to win the case in court, legally, no. Nigeria is increasingly behaving like a rogue country, like a rogue state. This row between Nigeria and Benin Republic might have an impact on the diplomatic relations between both countries, as Adebayo explains. What the vindictive government of Nigeria would do in the case of Iboho, if the Benin Republic insists on following due process, will be number one to close the border, Recall the ambassador and tell them to recall their own too. Both Igboho and Kanu have been targeted by the Nigerian government and her security forces for demanding a separate state. But Agule believes that the ballot box, not arms, is the answer. So the Igboho and even the Kanus should use the support that they have in a democratic setting for first and foremost getting people to the ballot. So that we can elect those who can work for us. Those who say that the ballot box is not an effective means of getting the government we want are not correct. Igboho is appearing in court in Benin, and many influential Nigerians are calling for a fair hearing in his case. Aneta, Felix, Plus TV Africa. This next report is on Kaduna's safety report. The state government has received its second quarter security report and it is not looking good. No fewer than 770 people were kidnapped within the period. Insecurity has been rife in many parts of Nigeria and more so in Kaduna state. As expected, the government appears to have been expediting efforts to curb the menace. One step is the state security report, which is handed to the governor by the Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Arouan. On the state of security in Kaduna State, the data on security incidents in the state during the second quarter of 2021 reflects the real agony of our citizens and communities, their pains and losses, and the fears and anxiety that have created considerable distress. The report also outlines what the Kaduna State Government and the security agencies are doing to contain the situation and provide relief to our communities. The Governor El Rafai maintains his position on the limitation of governors to control security agents posted to their respective state. He calls on the federal government to support the state to make up for manpower deficit. The governor sympathizes with the victims of banditry and the families of security agencies who lost their lives in the fight against banditry across the state. He promises to review the security architecture in line with what is currently obtainable and appeals to citizens who are losing confidence in security agencies to support and pray for the state. As governor of this state, it is a matter of profound regret for me that our considerable investments in security are yet to manifest in the defeat or at least the considerable degradation of the criminals that menace our people. We have consistently supported the federal security agencies deployed to our state with logistics, resources and equipment. Apart from these recurrent expenses, the state government has undertaken significant capital expenditure provide facilities that can multiply the capacity of security agencies to deter crime and conduct effective investigations of those that do occur. Insecurity, particularly in frontline communities, has threatened food security because most farmers in those areas have abandoned their farmlands for fear of being killed or kidnapped for ransom. The Nasiri El Rafai led government has been urged to intensify efforts towards enduring peace and security across the state. On effective policing now, 
The Inspector General of Police, Baba Usman, has raised the alarm over the incapability of the police force to tackle rising insecurity in the country due to lack of funds. Also, the Rule of Law and Accountability Advocacy Center, RULAC, gave some recommendations while briefing newsmen in Lagos. It says the police trust fund should be independent of the police and the government bureaucracy and trustees should make all the decisions to ensure efficiency. On 24th June 2019, President Buhari signed the Nigerian Police Trust Fund Establishment Bill into law to provide funds for the training and retraining of personnel of the Nigerian Police Force, provide them with state-of-the-art security equipment to improve the general welfare of the personnel of the Nigerian Police Force and enhance their preparedness among others. Over time, concerns have been raised to some of the many barriers to the effective performance of the PTF. Convener of Rulak Okechuku Wanguma speaks more on the essence of the trust fund and what is needed to be done going forward. We came here to do an assessment of the implementation of the Police Trust Fund two years after it was signed into law by the, the, the president to see to uh, to find out how far they have been able to achieve the mandate of providing additional funding for the police in the absence of the you know ad adequate fund from the, for the federal government. The issue of structure has also been identified as making it impossible for the fund to operate. Some members of civil society present were quick to observe the challenge of indiscipline and the limit to how much the executive secretary can approve. So they are good ones, they are good policemen. Not because there are bad eggs there, you know, we count all of them together, they are good policemen and women. And when you meet them, you fall in love with them. These men and women, to be frank with you, they suffer. Some of them don't have you know, their, their salary is nothing to talk about. Some of them, when you get to their divisions, they, are, they don't have anything to work with. Wangomar also speaks on other bureaucratic bottlenecks. When I talk about bureaucracy, I'm talking about, uh, one, the structure of the tr police trust fund. First of all, um, you have different layers of authority, which includes the police. And it's not supposed to be so because the police is a beneficiary organization. It's, it ought to be aside, the trust fund is supposed to be aside of the police. Aside the board of trustees, you have the, an implement, implementation committee. Aside that, the act also gives the BOT the power to appoint other committees. The Nigerian Police Trust Fund, in essence, seeks to achieve an overall improvement in the efficiency of the police force, including its auxiliary staff in Nigeria and abroad. Destiny Momo for PLUS TV Africa. The issues of inadequate funds for training and other operational exigencies remains a major challenge for the police, raising questions of corruption and the administration of the fund. You're watching Plus Reports. There is more after this break.